Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we're discussing the Calocrine Kynan system. Okay, so we're just in the process of discussing the acute inflammatory response. Specifically, we're looking at uh, type 2 activation of endothelial cells. Now, we've discussed that these type 2 activated endothelial cells will start uh, producing e selectin and CXTL8. And these uh, proteins would never usually be expressed in an endothelial cell. So, normal endothelial cells in non-infected tissue will not express either e selectin or CXTL8. Chemokine ligand 8. Okay, and uh, however, once they have undergone type 2 activation due to interleukin 1 or tumor necrosis factor alpha, the um, endothelial cells will start to express these two molecules and they will bind to um, molecules on the surface of the neutrophil here. So here is our neutrophil with its multi lobed nucleus here. Right, so what are the molecules that e selectin and uh, CXCR8 here bind to? Well, e selectin binds to a small molecule on the surface of the neutrophil known as Sialyl Lewis X. So this is Sialyl Lewis X. Okay. Um, and this is really a very, very small molecule. It's not a protein. It's a little sort of carbohydrate molecule that is attached to other proteins. So other integral membrane proteins on the surface of the neutrophil will have Sialyl Lewis X attached to them. And basically, E selectin binds to the Sialyl Lewis X that's on the surface of these, well, that's attached to these other proteins. Now, uh, CXCL8, meanwhile, binds to a protein receptor for CXCL8 on the surface of the neutrophil, and this is the CXC chemokine receptor 1. Okay, so CXC refers to the CXC chemokine, R refers to receptor, 1 refers to the number here. Okay, so let's colour this in in turquoise. So what will happen is... Again, the e selectin and the Sialyl Lewis X will form a quite weak adhesion, and that's known as tethering of the uh, neutrophil to the endothelial cell. And then the interaction between the uh, CXC chemokine ligand 8 and the CXC chemokine receptor 1, this is a stronger adhesion known as the tight adhesion. Okay, so you firstly get tethering, then tight adhesion, and then what will happen is the neutrophil will diapodes across the endothelium between the gaps, which are now bigger, between the endothelial cells, and uh, will be recruited to the interstitial space, and it will then go and uh, begin phagocytosing the pathogen, okay, which will help to clear the pathogenic infection. Now, that happens initially in type 2 activated endothelial cells, but later on what's going to happen is these endothelial cells which have undergone type 2 activation are going to change their gene expression. They're going to stop producing e selectin and CXC chemokine ligand 8, and instead they're going to start producing molecules which are needed for a different type of cell uh, recruitment, a different type of leukocyte to be recruited. Okay, and the type of leukocyte they're going to start recruiting from the blood are monocytes. Okay, so monocytes are slightly higher up in the hierarchy of leukocytes. So if neutrophils are the pawns of uh, the immune system, monocytes might be the rooks. Okay, so they're a little bit more expensive. You have a f little fewer of them, uh, and uh, they're a little bit more powerful. Okay, so... Um, here is our monocyte, and it's the precursor cell to a macrophage. So you don't have macrophages circulating in the bloodstream. They're far too big and sort of bulky and unelegant. Instead, you have these monocytes. And basically, when monocytes get recruited to peripheral tissue, they will differentiate into macrophages, and then the macrophage is another phagocyte, which will go and phagocytose pathogens and help to clear the infection. Okay, so what's going to happen is that the endothelial cell is going to start synthesizing uh, three different molecules that are going to be important in the recruitment of monocytes. Okay, and we'll continue this discussion in the next video.